In this episode of Reaper for Radio, I want to explain to you one of the most powerful features of Reaper. Um, this is a feature called Markers and Regions. I guess it's two independent features, but I think of them as kind of one and the same. You can think of Markers and Regions as kind of like your secretary for Reaper. So in this tutorial, I want to show you why Markers and Regions are a really fantastic way of keeping your projects organized. I'm going to show you how to add them, how to name them, how to edit them, how to use Reaper's region manager, and how that integrates with rendering out projects in parts. Um, this is going to be a shorter tutorial, but I think you'll enjoy just seeing the beautiful functionality of markers and regions. So without further ado, I'll show you here a good example of a candidate for a... Um, marking up. This was an interview I did uh, a while back where I went out to a therapeutic horse ranch um, and I did kind of a tour of the place while I interviewed the woman who runs it. And as you can see here, um, this is a long interview. This is a two and a half hour long interview. And there's no way that I would ever remember um, everything we talked about in that time period. So um, in the version I made for the for the podcast, I wound up marking this whole thing up. But um, just for simplicity's sake, I'll show you kind of here um, how that process works. So let's just find a spot at random here. We're 13 minutes in. Um, and say this was a, a part of the interview that I thought I might want to come back to later as I was cutting the piece. So, which is Spanish. So What's that mean? Okay. So here he's, she's introducing me to a horse. Chicho. Chicho. Chicho horse. the horse. A very clever oh, really? horse. Okay. So say this was something that I thought I might use in the show. I actually did wind up using it in the show. Um, what you'd want to do is you'd go up here into insert a marker. You can see it defaults to the letter M, but I'll show you this way first. Okay. And that just puts this little red line with the number one right here. If I were to right click on this and say edit marker, I could say Chicho. And that would be a great reminder for me that this is where the bit about Chicho starts. And you can see I can, if I got in the wrong place, I'd probably want to put it right about there. Just a little bit of intro. So Chicho, he's a clever um, These are things that are not set oh, in stone, yeah. which can be a problem at times, actually. Okay, so we have Chicho um, right there. Let's, uh, let's head over to another spot and see what else we can find. Let's just say this was a part that I thought was interesting. I'd go up into here to insert marker, get another marker right here at the playhead. I'd say edit marker and I'd say, whoops, another thing. So you can see there's a couple other options here right now though. We have the position, which is um, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, but there's also a numerical ID that gets attached to every marker. I don't think you can put a letter in there. I'll try it. Nope. <laughs> um, it has to be a numerical number. It doesn't matter what it is. A numerical number, that's one for the history books. 2005. Um, and you can also set it with a custom color too, which is actually kind of nice. Um, if you want to remember it via lime green instead of just another thing. Um, that's just up there. So now marker 2005 has a green marker to it. The numbers aren't too important, but they do help give you a hint as far as when you inserted the marker. Um, another thing you have an option of here is adding a marker and prompting for a name. So that dialog box comes up right away, as opposed to having to right click right there. So you could say, even another. Okay. So that's markers in a, in a nutshell. Um, they're great for organizing things. Um, I use them every single time I do a project. The, the little bit of footwork you have to put in will save you hours of time because this is really nice actually because I know a lot of people who write transcripts of all their interviews and this is a much faster way of finding some. This is essentially a timed transcript so that you don't have to go back and scroll through all your audio. Um, I just do my transcripts up here. So, uh, regions, regions are very similar. Regions are essentially just markers that have a set duration to them. I'll show you what I mean right here. So say this was a section and we were interested in. And he grabbed as many baggies as he could. This is he talking about a horse that um, stole a bunch of like uh, horse food. <laughs> okay. Um, so say I wanted to put this in the show. Um, this did not wind up making the cut, but 
If I go up here into insert again, you can have insert region from time selection. All I did was I uh, clicked and dragged to make the time selection. Escape will cancel it. Click and drag, insert, region. And there you can see, this is on a different bar. This is just one bar above here. But this is your region bar. This is your marker bar. And all I have to do here is say, edit region. Mm, let's say horse theft. Okay. And you can see I have some of the same options here. Regions have their own numerical IDs. Um, they're different from the markers. Again, the ID numbers aren't anything to stress out about. You can see you also have your position and the length. This is a 44 second long region. Um, and you have the color selection just like you do over there. Let's make this one orange. And uh, you can see there's a couple other options here. And I'll show you what this render and region manager are in just a moment. Okay. But this is the basic idea. So one thing you're saying is like, okay, well, this is kind of a pain that I have to go up here and insert marker, or you can actually hit M here just for a plain marker. Nothing wrong with that. You can see I'm just hitting M. Um, but in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to start setting custom shortcuts because this is a pain because really in radio, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using it with the name attached almost every single time. Um, especially when you're writing transcripts up in the, up in the marker bar up here. So I, I'm going to show you in the next tutorial how to set that up so that it just defaults to bring up that prompting box. But in the meantime, I want to show you here in this um, finished piece how I used regions to separate out different parts of a show. Um, this was a show that had four different parts to it. They're kind of like acts. You can think like This American Life, that sort of style. There were four different acts to it. And I marked off each act by setting a region. And the reason why I did that was because now, as I have the piece finished, but if I want to show it to someone someday, or if I just say, oh, you know, like actually some of these parts might be inappropriate, or like some of these parts are more interesting than others, what I can do is I can render out individual bits of the show without really even having to think about it. Because if I go up here to view, and if I go to the um, region slash marker manager, you can see that actually normally it'll show up here with the markers too. You can see that all of the notes that I've made about the piece and all the regions I've made show up here in one window. So I'm going to hide the markers though, just for the time being, just so you can see that I have these four different regions here, and these represent the four different pieces of the show. Um, right now, you I mean, all this stuff makes sense, but there's this little column here that says render. And this will determine what gets rendered when I choose to render regions out. Say I want to send someone this piece about the cockroaches. I would check the little render box here. I click render and it would bring up just the standard Reaper render dialog. Um, I'm going to delete that because that's what I want to show you. So this piece is called gates. But um, what we're going to be rendering here is the project regions. Normally you would be rendering the entire project or a time selection, but right now we're going to be rendering project regions. Um, and you can see that it says that I'm rendering one file out here. So this file is going to be called gates. And this isn't really anything that special, but uh, when you're rendering out multiple regions, there's something really neat you can do right here. Because I could just write in here, I could say, okay, let's say I want to render out all four different regions, but I want separate files, right? So I could say cockroaches, right? Um, this would be a pain because I, what if I had 50 different regions I wanted to render and I had to name each one of them? So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to say gates, right? I'm going to put a dash in here. You can mark it however you want. And then I'm going to go over here to wild cards and the wild cards are kind of like auto text that you can put in your file names. Um, there's a ton of different options here, but the one I'm interested in here is region. And now you can see the file name is going to be named gates dash cockroaches. Check this out. What if I was going to render them all out? So now four different files here. You can see if I click this four files button, you can see one of them is going to be called Gates, the third roommate. One's going to be called Gates, cockroaches. One's going to be called Gates, daywalkers. And the last will be Gates, roaches, part two. So it's a really neat way to um, render things out if you have a lot of regions and if you're down to use regions. This is something you can experiment with, not something for every day. But that is the basics of what I wanted to show you. And of course, this works just the same way it normally would. Just click render. And there it goes. Okay. 
The last, last thing I wanted to show you about this though, is, is one word of caution. So I'm going to go back here into this other, um, this other project I was showing you. I'm going to split some of these off using S just kind of arbitrarily. Um, I just want to show you that there's something really important here that you don't want to miss, which is that regions pay attention to ripple editing. And if you haven't seen ripple editing yet, go back and check it out. It's uh, episode number two of Reaper for radio. Uh, it'll teach you a lot about how this tool works and how amazing it can be. But, um, as long as you have ripple editing enabled, your markers will move with you. Very important. If you do not have ripple editing enabled, it pays attention to that and your pieces will not move with your notes attached. So that's just something to keep in mind, but all in all markers and regions are very helpful tools for Reaper. I just want to show you one last thing. Of course, I always try to be a little bit self-promotional here. Um, hope that doesn't bug you too much, but if you're interested in that piece, I was just showing you with the four parts, you can go check it out on the here be monsters website. That's the podcast I produce. Uh, it's hbmpodcast.com and look for episode 20. It's called without name. I think you'll like it. As always, thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions, comments, or requests for future episodes, be sure to drop me a line either in the comment box down below and never hesitate to send me an email. Thanks for watching.